Indiana basketball, Mike, takes on Nebraska, uh, a game that two weeks ago looked like a nice little tune-up before they take on and travel to uh, Las Vegas to take on Arizona. But Nebraska beat Creighton, a legitimate top 10 team. That is the that could still be the biggest shocker that lasts all damn season to me. I, I, I would never have ever given Nebraska a chance to beat any top 10 team. It's the most amazing result of the year because they didn't just beat them. I mean, it's not like, okay, they, they, you know, they hung around and they dominated the game. They won by 10 points at Creighton. I mean, yeah. and, and, and okay. So you check the box score. We're like, when are guys missing? Nope. Kaluma, Cockbrenner, or Shireman, Nemhard, Alexander, all their guys, they had everybody and they clocked them. I mean, that's just, it was an amazing result. And it's not even like we're close enough to Maui to say, okay, well, they came back from Maui and had the hang. Nope, not that. They just, they just clobbered them. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, I, I, I am astounded, but this is this Nebraska team. I mean, they beat two other high major teams. Now, not good ones, Boston college and Florida state, but that's two other high major teams in a row that they defeated. Uh, so maybe they found something. Uh, earlier in the year, I mean, they go out and they lose to St. John's and Oklahoma and Memphis, and none of those games are competitive. But now they're on a three-game winning streak all against high major opponents. Not Again, not good ones. Uh, Florida State's really struggling. Boston College hadn't been good for a long time. Uh, but uh, Creighton's legit. Uh, we've seen that. They, they, they've played – Creighton played Arizona to the buzzer uh, before losing in the Maui Championship. They uh, played four straight undefeated ranked teams – Right back in their period. That that I mean they're they're going to be battle tested. Yes. Uh, maybe they were tired. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But maybe they underestimated Nebraska. Thought it'd be an easy game. Uh, you know, there. I talk all the all the time about this. That uh, that 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 players sometimes think okay, bad team, home game, good crowd. You know, Creighton sells out for Nebraska. There's going to be even a little bit more amp. This, they'll they'll win the game for us. You know, we just have to play okay. It could have been one of those games, but still, I mean, it, it says uh, that you, as I, you now have to take this game super seriously. Even you know, even though it's in your gym, you can't now say, okay, you know, we can half bake this effort and we'll be fine. Uh, you have to go out and play until they say they're not going to be competitive. You have to go out and play hard, uh, play your best, or you could wind up in the same position that Creighton did. And the thing that interests me about uh, about that game, Mike, and you look at the results through the first couple weeks of the season, um, I don't know that there is – we talked about the parity in college football this season. There's a lot of parity in college basketball again this year. I don't know that there's that one – dominant team I mean you can look at some of the some of the teams that are in the top four that haven't lost yet I mean Purdue um, you can talk about Arizona you can talk about Texas there's some really good teams I think but I don't know that there's man there's a lot of teams that can get you if you're not playing your best and I know that's typically the case but it feels like even more so this season and maybe that's because North Carolina isn't quite as good maybe that's because Gonzaga and Duke are struggling a little bit I don't I don't know what the case is but do you do you get that same sense that this is a like I I feel like any just like we saw Nebraska beat Creighton. Jim said I would have never guessed in this season that would happen, but we've seen a lot of different results like this so far. Yeah, I really like this Texas team. I think they're very dangerous. But when I look at the first 15, 16 teams, I think it, it's early, and I'm not, you know, and I'm not ready to make any. But I can't I can't remember there being less difference among those top sure. fifteen or sixteen teams than this year. I'm not going to say that's never happened, but. I just, you know, I, I, I look at, at the teams we rank number one, two, three, four, and I, my rankings were pretty close to everybody else's. I did not have Carolina at number one, but I had Kentucky at number one and they're struggling in some ways too. Um, UCLA was up there. Gonzaga was up there. Uh, they're all good teams. Uh, they, they've all beaten good opponents, uh, but they're not, un, they have not been unbeatable. Uh, I think I think we're going to find out that this year is a very balanced year. We'll see somebody rise to the top, whether it's Texas staying there or IU staying there, or whoever it might be, Purdue. Uh, there'll be some teams that rise to the top and stay there, but I think that I don't think that anybody's going to be far out of reach of any other top team. And when I say top, I'm talking about 15, 20. 
in that range, the teams that would be seated. Now, I, I will say that uh, when we get to the Sweet 16, the, whoever the 4-5 winner is that plays the one seed, I think is going to be really dangerous to the one seed. Uh, in, in ways that weren't maybe weren't a year a uh, year ago or, or or several years ago. Uh, let's see, Mike. As uh, then, of course, we won't talk to you. But after the Nebraska game, not knowing what happens with that, Indiana travels to Las Vegas to take on Arizona in a big time national TV game. Um, after the 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 letdown at at at, at Rutgers, which was. I mean, that's all you can say is it was a letdown, man. They did not perform, and Rutgers just out did everything to Indiana, out hustled, out worked, out out everything. Um, they've got a bounce back that I uh, talked earlier with Dustin. The luster from that North Carolina win is really fading, man. They with four straight loss. I mean, North Carolina dropped like a rock from number one out fastest fastest number one team has ever dropped out of the top twenty five, I believe. So. At first, it wasn't a big deal, but man, they they continue to lose. So that win is, is not as impressive as it as it was. Indiana will get their first true test. I get well, they already got a true test at Rutgers, and they failed it. They get another test at Arizona or against Arizona, and Arizona is a much much better team than Rutgers. Yeah, and Arizona has terrific big guys. They're they're uh, Omar Balo is playing great. Tabellus is is a terrific player. Uh, so. You know those guys. Those guys will really be a test for IU inside. Uh, it's going to be a real challenge. And then uh, I believe a week after that they have to play uh, KU. Uh, so they've got a couple of really tough tests coming up in addition to Nebraska in the league. Uh, I think it's good for them. I, I look. They, they were bad at Rutgers, uh, but it's a tough place to play. And Rutgers had a great game plan, and none of that's a surprise. Uh, and and I you know I was a little disappointed. In some, yeah, because I thought Miller Cop showed up and played really well, and that should have elevated the other players. Him, him adding some space to the to the floor should have elevated the players. But let's not forget they did not have Jalen Hood Shafino, and uh, he's in a he's an essential component of what makes this team exceptional. They could be good without Jalen, uh, but they're not playing at the highest level without him. No, nope. uh, because they, they don't have enough. They don't have enough punch. It's last uh, year's team, basically, without him. Yeah. And I they mean, were good. I mean, yeah. And they were good last year at times. But, you know, they, they couldn't sustain excellence. Uh, and so they need him out there. And to, to not have him at Rutgers, let's not forget that that was a big component of why they struggled as much as they did. Uh, absolutely. I I, I totally agree because not having him in there completely alters their offense it goes back to exactly what it was last year which and you saw Rutgers do what what a lot of teams did last year pack it in against Indiana force him to shoot outside because you didn't have Jalen Hood Shafino who with his ball handling off of Xavier they both can create shots they both right. can create a little more spacing and do things that just wasn't there Xavier got frustrated. He got really frustrated with having to carry all that extra load. As a matter of fact, I, I think I said this on the show yesterday. I don't think I've ever seen a player more physically frustrated than he was when he took that timeout, when he got boxed in the corner uh, of the backcourt there. And he, oh, he was just, you could just see he was so mad. He called a timeout just to get out of it. I'm like, going, <laughs> man, that, he is just, they got him. They were into his head. They were in all their heads and they did a great job. You, and you just got to take your, your, your tip, your hat to, to Rutgers and Steve Peichel. Great coach does a tremendous job. Uh, just, just a super job. And, and so I, I think I, I I'm not sure what uh, Jalen's uh, situation will be for Nebraska and then Arizona. Uh, hopefully he, he recovers from the back problem. Uh, back's going to be tricky. So hopefully is isn't, just was a you know slept wrong or something uh twisted wrong in practice or whatever and he'll be back and ready to go because uh they're gonna have a tough time winning against the best teams without him as a high level oh, contributor 